Greetings, my name is Randall Cheatham. Uh, I portray uh, Chaplain Francis Springer for the, uh, of the 10th Illinois Volunteer Cavalry. Uh, our message today is about the traveling preachers. And uh, starting off, I'd like to tell you what they called them. They called them evangelists, uh, pulpiteers, itinerant ministers, sermonizers, missionaries, traveling preachers, revivalists, and circuit riders. They came from different backgrounds, different religious denominations and traditions, styles and techniques that varied and were sometimes unusual and unorthodox. Some were young, some were slaves, some were women. Some were so close to death that they thanked God for each sunrise. They were survivors. Many of them battled Indians, roughnecks, disease, bad weather, treacherous terrain, the establishment, and adverse conditions. Some lost their jobs, their children, their spouses, respect, incomes, and even their own lives. Their stories are full of color. Their lives were fraught with adventure, disappointments, failures, and victory. But they all had one thing in common, an insatiable desire to bring the life-changing message of Jesus Christ to the untamed wilderness of America. Their powerful oratory and determination was far-reaching and cumulative, leading to great spiritual mile markers such as the camp meeting at Cane Ridge, the Gasper River Church Revival, the creation of praying Indian towns, and the first and second Great Awakenings which many credit as the beginnings of the American Revolution and the American Civil War, respectively. Both of these wars were fought for freedom from tyranny and from slavery. If you look into the Old Testament, you will find that the prophet Samuel may have been the very first circuit riding preacher. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 15 and 16, it states, and Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. He went from year to year on a circuit to Bethel, Gilgal, and Mitzpah, and judged Israel in all those places. But Peter Cartwright was one of those circuit riding preachers also. And he probably had the longest career with 71 years of preaching the circuit. His home is just down the road from here in Pleasant Plains and his final resting place is in the cemetery just outside of town. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2 tells us, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort, with all long-suffering and teaching. I believe Peter Cartwright lived by these words, as did many of the circuit riders. Life on the trail for these intense preachers was in fact so rugged and exacting that half of them died before the age of 33. Many of them, however, thrived on the severity of trail life despite the hardships. And Peter Cartwright was one of those. In 1846, he ran against Abraham Lincoln for the congressional seat in Illinois and lost to the future president. He helped establish McKendry College in Lebanon, Illinois, Illinois Wesleyan University in Bloomington, and McMurray College in Jacksonville, Illinois. Peter Cartwright was known for his uncompromising preaching. One day when the president of the United States, Andrew Jackson, old rough and ready, came to Cartwright's church. The elders warned the pastor not to offend the president. In those days, the president had great power to influence the denomination for good or for bad. Content that their pastor would not say anything to discredit the church, the elders retired to the back of the sanctuary. When Cartwright got up to speak, the first words out of his mouth were, I understand that President Andrew Jackson is here this morning. I've been requested to be very guarded in my remarks. Let me say this, Andrew Jackson will go to hell if he doesn't repent of his sin. The entire congregation gasped with shock at Cartwright's boldness. 
How could this young preacher dare to offend the tough old general in public? After the service, everyone wondered how the president would respond to Cartwright. When Andrew Jackson met with the preacher at the door, he looked at him in the eye and said, Sir, if I had a regiment of men like you, I could conquer the world. During the intense campaign for the Illinois congressional seat in 1846, Peter Cartwright faced Abraham Lincoln. Some followers of Reverend Cartwright accused Lincoln of being an infidel. In response, Lincoln decided to meet Cartwright on his own ground and attended one of his evangelistic rallies. During the service, Cartwright said, all who desire to lead a new life, to give their hearts to God and go to heaven, will stand. And a sprinkling of men and women and children stood up. Then the preacher exhorted, all who do not wish to go to hell will stand. All stood up except Lincoln. Then Cartwright said in his gravest voice, I observed that many responded to the first invitation to give their hearts to God and go to heaven. And I further observed that all of you saved one indicated that you did not desire to go to hell. The sole exception is Mr. Lincoln, who did not respond to either invitation. May I inquire of you, Mr. Lincoln, where are you going? And Lincoln slowly rose and slowly spoke. I came here as a respectful listener. I did not know that I was to be singled out by Brother Cartwright. I believe in treating religious matters with due solemnity. I admit that the questions propounded by Brother Cartwright are of great importance. I did not feel called upon to answer as the rest did. Brother Cartwright asked me directly where I am going. I desire to reply with equal directness. I am going to Congress. And so he did. But Mr. Cartwright's attitude toward Mr. Lincoln mellowed with age. In 1862, Cartwright visited New York, where he spoke before a dinner of New Yorkers who were unfriendly to the President Lincoln administration and said, once we were opposing candidates for a seat in Congress, and I went down in defeat. But it was defeat by a gentleman and a patriot. I stand here tonight to commend to you the Christian character, sterling integrity, and far-seeing sagacity of the President of the United States. I am confident that he is the man to meet and go forward in this crisis to lead his countrymen amid and through the terrible strife in which we are now engaged. He has a cool-headed, God-fearing, and unselfish love of his country and knows from top to bottom the life and spirit of men, both North and South. Peter Cartwright wrote in his autobiography, a Methodist preacher in those days when he felt that God had called him to preach, instead of hunting up a college or biblical institute, hunted up a hardy pony of a horse and some traveling apparatus. And with his library always at hand, namely a Bible, a hymn book, and a discipline, he started. And with a text that never wore out or grew stale, he cried, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. In this way he went through storms of wind, hail, snow, and rain, climbed hills and mountains, traversed valleys, and plunged through swamps, swollen streams, lay out all night wet, weary, and hungry, held his horse by the bridle all night, or tied him to a limb, slept with his saddle blanket for a bed, and his saddlebags for a pillow. In 2 Corinthians 12, 15, Paul says, and I will gladly spend and be spent for your souls. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I am loved. In the lives of these men, I see this concept lived out. These men took the word of God seriously when it says in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God wants us to always be ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. The word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it accomplishes God's purpose when it is sent forth, whether it be healing and salvation or death and condemnation. It will accomplish what the Lord intends 
And we are charged to always be prepared to wield that sword. I heard a preacher once say that he taught his students to always be ready at a moment's notice to preach, pray, or die, and they would do fine. The story of the circuit riding preacher has inspired some to music and verse. And here is a small sampling. The circuit riding preacher rides through the land with the rifle on his saddle and a Bible in his hand. He's God's voice for truth and justice in a land of pain and hurt. And the blue sky above is his church. The circuit riding preacher rides through the mire and the mud. He preached the way to heaven is by water and the blood. He baptized in the river like the prophet John of old. And his story deserves to be told. In a brush arbor sanctuary with an evangelistic fervor, he preached the word of God as the Holy Spirit hovered. There's still an old plank altar stained by the tears of men as the Lord washed away their sins. In Mark chapter 16, the Lord says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So in a very real sense, God commands us all to be itinerant preachers, to be circuit riders, preaching the word to every creature in season and out of season, whenever and wherever possible and at every opportunity. May God bless you and keep you as you do so. Please pray with me. Lord God in heaven, as we ride this journey of life, help us always to remember that you are riding alongside us, leading us in the way you would have us to go, that you will never leave us or forsake us. And Father, if there be any listening to this today that do not yet know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray you will touch their hearts with your loving hands. Compel them with your spirit and your word to answer your call to them as a good shepherd who leaves the 99 to find the one that is lost. The good shepherd that lays down his life for his sheep. Lord Jesus, you are that good shepherd, and we thank you for being with us today. We ask, Lord, that you bless us this day as we go forth to be a blessing to others. In Christ's name the name above every other name, the name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That is the name in which we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for listening today. Amen.